Hello everyone! Hey guys! And welcome to another episode of Massey Art, Art Studios. Studios. I'm Lee. I'm Jeremy. And you all know that this is Tater Tot. Yes. Tate is with us today because it's Tuesdays with Tate. And um, yeah, we wanted, I know you guys keep asking about him. He's adorable, he's growing well, he's, he's gotten so big. just as much of a little pain in the behind as he is, a little angel. Um, yeah, right, always on camera, he always acts really cute. Um, <laughs> he's a good boy. So, in this episode, yes, it's a blobtastic episode. It is just <laughs> going to be a blob that I did that I'm really, really excited about because I think it came out really pretty. And I use TLP pigments in every single layer and in the resin on the base as well. Yes, but we'll a little bit more about that when we get to the table. So please sit back and relax and watch this really fun blob. And if you didn't know, we're actually doing a blob class at the Fluid Art Experience. We are. April the 27th to the 29th, we are about 80% full. So yeah. there's only a few seats left in that class. But if you would like to come and blob with us in person, over three days, so you'll get to do at least three layers and then take that blob home with you, please go and check out www.fluidartexperience.com <laughs> for more information. <laughs> All right, let's get to it, sir. Let's get to it. Let's get to the table. That's a deep topic. It is a deep topic. And here we are again with a, another one of my lovely blobs. Yes. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to just keep indulging my obsession with these blobs. <laughs> I am absolutely <laughs> loving these and I'm about to do something very different. So this will probably be the last of maybe just the traditional blobs that you guys get to see. But let's talk about this one. Yes. So again, I used Pompous. Uh -huh which was one of the wonderful fluid art pigments yes. in the resin on this wooden board. So this is a um, one of the wooden boards rather than a canvas. And I did paint it black first. Okay. And then I mixed pompous into the resin and put resin on the board and let that dry. Got it. So pompous is actually a really cool color shifty color. Uh -huh. And it color shifts from black to red. So as you'll see kind of like the light hit it in different places, it, it looks completely different colours. It does. Really, it really, does. really cool. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it was actually the, the TLP collab that made me want to do this. I've never done a, a blob with so many layers where they're all TLP colours. Yeah. And that's what this one is. So these colours are Pinwheel, Twilight, Violet Rain, Rosé, watermelon and sequins mm. and rather than just doing all one color on the bottom and then all another color on this layer, I'm mixing all these colors up so here is just every one of those six colors on this canvas and the ratio or how I get them into a blob consistency is by using the Saks True Flow gloss medium got it and my normal pouring recipe for a blob is 50% Mod Podge 25% paint and 25% gloss varnish. Yes. So you have to get the TLPs into a ratio that, that will take over your paint ratio. So what I do is 25% true flow. Got it. And then I mix in a tablespoon or two or at the end of a popsicle stick or two of pigment with the true flow. So for example, in this bottle here, which is 16 ounces, I mixed four ounces of true flow about two tablespoons of pigment, teaspoons of pigment, sorry, four ounces of the gloss varnish, and then eight ounces of Mod Podge. Nice. 50, 25, 25 to get me to this blobbing consistency. And what you really want with a blob is a nice consistency that'll allow it to go. Yes. You don't want little pancakes. Exactly. You don't want flat blobs. You actually want there to be a blob. It's got yeah. to be a domed consistency. So it's a real fine line between too thick and too thin. Mm -hmm. um, this recipe should give you a really, really good recipe for blobbing. Yeah, definitely. Do you, do you would agree? I totally it? agree. Because look at it. I mean, it's amazing. Look at it, indeed. And so, hints and tips here for you: keep the nozzle straight when you're piping. Yes. And what I do for my bigger blobs is I count as I'm piping them out. 
So I'll count one, two, three, four, five to kind of get some kind of somewhat some uniformity mm. in the blobbing. Um, and then I'm just filling some of the negative space now with some of the other kind of smaller blobs. And here you will see me absolutely torch them off. Yes. So you can torch these. Don't be popping them with a little popsicle stick or a, like a little wooden stick. What's the point? It'd be there forever. Yeah. Pop them with a torch. It doesn't reheat the resin. It doesn't interact with the paint as long as you're just really careful with it. Now what you'll see is these colours are super muted, almost bubblegum looking. Yeah. But after 24 hours, these colours will dry completely true to the colour that you yeah. see on the pot. Completely different than what they look now. Absolutely. And by some magic, what I'll show you right now is exactly that. Ooh. <laughs> there you go. Look at those. How amazing are those colours? That's Pinwheel, Twilight, Violet Rain, Rosé, Watermelon and Sequin. I mean, look at that violent rain. That violent is... rain. Violet. You said violent. Oh, did I? Yeah. Uh. Look at that angry sunshine. <laughs> look at that slight, slightly peed off thunder. <laughs> violet rain. Violet. Well, because it's a take on rain. the song by a very famous yes. artist, but they couldn't call it that because clearly yes. then there'd be copyright and infringements. And all yes, that all that stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Violet rain. I love that violet rain. I do too. In a blob, it's a really fun color. I've not used it any other way, but it's stunning. It is. All those turned out so beautiful. They really did. It was a really fun palette. Um, I didn't intentionally go back to like a Valentine's palette. I just wanted to do kind of purples and pinks mm -hmm. and shades mm -hmm. of reds. So again, it was Pinwheel, Twilight, Violet Rain, Rosé, Watermelon, and Sequins, sequin. which is the, the really white wonderful white. Yeah. yeah now, what you can't see is that that sequins, that whitish looking one, now it has an iridescence it to it. Mm -hmm. So when you see it in person, it has this glimmer to it right. um, that is that is beautiful. Hopefully they'll get to see that in the outro because we are going to show them the completely dry piece. Yes, I know. No, no, and there was a good point that I wanted you to point it out. Thank you, Bob. Keep an eye out for that and see if you can see it in okay. the outro. Um, and I'm hoping you'll be able to see some of the colour shiftedness of the actual resin on the canvas mm. too. Uh, I really loved doing this one. It was a really, really fun piece and TLPs work amazingly in blobs. Yeah. Because that true flow is just perfect, really spot on. Again, I'm just kind of torching these off as I go, but um, I'm gonna speed this up double time. In fact, this is already double time. So this is me twice the normal speed. Um, I'm gonna let you sit back and kind of relax and watch a layer or two, and I'll come in at the end for a little bit, a little bit more hints and tips. Okay. If that's okay, Sean Pony. That's okay. You can sit back and listen to some funky music too. I'm already relaxing. I'm already there with you. Let's do it.
difference 24 hours makes. I know. Just 24 hours and you can see that difference going from that milky consistency to, uh -huh. the, to the really shiny kind of true colour. Yeah. Why is that? You might ask yourself, well, the Mod Podge is milky, the gloss varnish is not clear, Yeah. but they both dry completely clear. Yes. So then when they dry, they just reveal the colours of the pigment in the actual product. Exactly. And that's why they work so beautifully. Um, hints and tips show pony on blobs, because I'll tell you what, it looks easy. You think you're just kind of piping out some colours onto a canvas. But I've done these many, many times and still mess them up. Um, what would be hints and tips that you would like to say? Because I know you've done some too. Well, you know what's funny is that fluid art looks easy. Right. And like you said, it's really not. There's so much things to take into consideration and do. Um, as far as tips and hints go and tricks, uh, whenever you're going to squeeze that paint out of that bottle, mm -hmm. uh, not only do you want to count to, you know, to keep the, you know, one, two, three, or, you know, that kind of thing is, but whenever you have the tip, have it a little bit in the paint. And when you squeeze, you kind of pull up, Good keeping point. it in the paint as it comes out. It's, it's really important to do that, especially on the metallics, because I found if you don't do that, you get a really weird kind of like drying color of the metallic. Mm. And, and, and so no, it's a really, really good point. And what you might see as I switch from color to color, I have a piece of paper towel on the table right next to me there, you see that? Mm -hmm. What I did was I just squirted out the end of the tube. Like the air that's trapped in there. It's the air, but it also, I find that, and it depends where you keep your bottles, if you keep them in front of a window, or if you keep them in front of a radiator or something, they'll get a little loose in the squeeze uh. bottle. So you're kind of squeezing out that, that bit of loose material, uh, that loose product at the very beginning, and then you just get back to the normal pouring consistency. Yes. So yes, as well as squeezing out the bubbles, which leads me to another tip, store these upside down. Yes. I have a really wonderful contraption that is currently a prototype for something that might be coming soon, but you can just invert them into cups or cut the bottom of a cup out and slap it in there too. If you keep this upside down, it will help with the bubbles. Yes. The bubbles will rise to the top of the squeeze bottle, which actually is... Keeps it away from the, the point. Exactly, the nozzle. Yeah. Um, and don't forget to torch as you go along. I torch these consistently. These, these sit in what well, here is our kind of informal dining room. And so what I'll do is every kind of 10, 15 minutes, I'll just go up and touch torch it again because there'll be more bubbles that will appear as you go through it. You know what else you will see up here? What's that? Probably my legs in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we do. I think you're sitting on the sofa crotcheting or, uh, or, or doing one of your other many projects that you've got on the go right now. Um, so yeah, I think I think you left me alone for this one, quite possibly. <laughs> but look at me, I'm not even wearing painting clothes. I'm just wearing everyday clothes and throwing caution to the wind. Now I'm wearing painting gloves. No, I think I think in this one is where you actually see me come up like behind you. Quite something. possibly. Yeah. Yeah, this is you and I have just come in from the garage after yeah. some painting here, which is why I look like, you know, an actual Jackson Pollock myself. I hope I hope I have pants on. <laughs> so do I. I didn't check. It's no pants zone in our studio sometimes. Um, this is the final layer. Um, I did some really thick layers in this one because I really wanted to show off the colours. Yes. And so the fourth layer was all I could actually get on some of them. It's just a little blob. It's a tiny little kind of blob on the top of them. I think they look like little cakes, like little petty fours. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed the colours on this one. It was really, really fun. Oh, this would, I, I think by far, <laughs> this is your best one. Says that every I'm like, time. every single blob is perfectly spaced. Right. None of them are touching. No. And it's just the colors, these piggies oh, so are unbelievable. Amazing. Like so, they dried so cool. gorgeous. I can't wait to use them again. Another I color know. palette on another piece. Well, I have an idea for piggies okay. that I'm going to play with in the studio and, okay. and see what happens. I love it. I'm, I'm if glad it works, you guys will have it, uh, see it coming to you soon. In, a, in an episode near you soon. All right, so um, I'm going to get to finishing off this fourth layer. Stick around because we'll show you the finished piece in the outro. Okay. Thank you, sir.
So there you have it. There you have it. There you have it. All right. Without much further ado. Okay, so first off, that wonderful pompous again, that color shift pigment in the resin undercoat. But look at that blooming TLP in this really wonderful, wonderful blob. I love this one. I do too. It's called Twilight Sparkle. And it's called Twilight Sparkle in honor of the wonderful Lanny who works for fluid-art.co. She's not only a wonderful person, she's a wonderful employee, just an all-around great human. Um, and Twilight Sparkle was her favorite My Little Pony. And these colors reminded her of it. Aww. So that's the reason why this one is called Twilight Sparkle. Um, yeah, really enjoyed that. Those pigments work wonderfully. I love that. Thank you. They, it's one of my favorite blobs, probably one of oh, my yeah. better compositions. Um, lots more to come. So blobs taking them to a whole nother level. Yes. With the show pony's help, I'm gonna be using some acrylic rods, some two inch tiles. I'm gonna create some height, maybe some different levels of blobs. Some really fun stuff coming in a painting that I'm yeah. currently working on that's gonna take me a little while to do, but it's something that I'm really excited about. Now, also coming up, mm -hmm. something a little uh, tidbit, little preview here, mm -hmm. is that we have a 36 by 36, and I don't want to tell you exactly what it is, but it is huge and we're going to be pouring over it and it's amazing. Well, you didn't tell them anything other than 36 by 36, but that's the way I like it. <laughs> a little snippet of info there for you. So you're going to have to keep your eye on the channel. It's probably going to yeah. be coming up in the next week or two, yeah. but it is not a canvas. No, it's not a it's canvas. It's something else. Yes. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a really fun pour. It is. Um, speaking of really fun pours, I forgot to mention that, that the Patreons who are part of the Massey Posse are actually using this color palette as their painting challenge for this week. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm excited to see what you gals and guys get up to. And we're actually gonna have a Massey Posse collab episode on the channel. It will be sometime in March. Awesome. And uh, you'll get to see all of the Patreons and all of their work too. So really excited for that one as well. Yeah, me too. Hi guys, we hope you enjoyed this. Um, I really love these blobs. You'll be seeing more of them interspersed between our normal pours. We'll be back on Sunday with another episode. Yeah. At our usual time, 11 o'clock central. Until then, please keep pouring, have a fun all week. Go check out Kathleen because she's always got an episode right after us. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you back here on Sunday. All right, guys. All right, guys, we'll see you then. Bye. Have a good week. So now it's time to spank the Patreons. It is time to spank the Patreons. And who are the Patreons? Well, they're a really special bunch of people. Yes. Who've decided to come and follow us outside of the YouTube channel. It says a completely separate account and people can opt into different tiers. Yeah, absolutely. And those different tiers allow people different rewards. Uh -huh. So for example, at one level, there's behind the scenes pictures and videos and sneak peeks of what we do in the studio. Uh -huh. And then at another level, there is a once a month live stream exclusively just for those yeah. gold level Patreons. And then at another level, they also get a once a month live tutorial. Yes. Where we might take an individual technique and walk through it step by step by step by step. So we really appreciate these guys because they're coming to us and supporting us outside of the channel. It means an awful lot to it us. It does mean a lot to us. So we have some thank yous. And at that gold level, we have, we have Trisha West, we have Terry Leshner, we have Tammy Housebrook, we have Stephanie Hancock, We've got Sharon Luffy, the wonderful pocket rocket Patsy Petrelli. <laughs> We've got Nate Bright Art. We've got Mamadoulas. We have Linda Serieni. We've got Kelly Stowell of Feral Arts. Yeah. We've got Jane Klein and Gloria Salaki. We have Gillian Kennedy yes. of Bell's Creations. We have Elizabeth Giuliano. We have Kathy J. And we have Amy, AKA Crafty Chicken Mom. Yes. And? And then on our platinum level, we have Susan Shepherson, Susan Chigori, Judith Joan Art, we have Janice Pittman, and we have Elaine Burton. Oh my gosh, we all know and love and has been with us pretty much from day one. Yes. 
as most of you have. So thank you so very much for being with us. Yes. We really genuinely do appreciate you and your support. It allows us the opportunity to keep painting and keep doing fun stuff for you guys. Mm -hmm. So thank you so very much. Thank you very much. And to everyone else that's down here below, we honestly can't thank you enough. It really does mean the world to us. So thanks guys. <laughs>